welcome to the sixth episode of Caped Informers. I'm Christian. I'm here today with my buddies Ryan and Dan. How you doing, boys? Doing pretty good. Doing well, indeed. Yep. Uh, uh, Brady couldn't join us today. He's out stuck in Westfield somewhere, but, you know, he'll be around next week. So we got a, a huge packed show today for you guys. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. So we're just going to start right off with one of the biggest news of the week. Um, on Jimmy Kimmel on Tuesday, Chris Pratt was on. And they released Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. So, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, guys. We finally got to see a little footage. We got to see a little action. Got to see a little music. <laughs> it, it was a real, like, offbeat and funny kind of trailer, you know? And, like, yeah. uh, it was it was a lot different than what you'd expect. So, uh, I just want to ask you guys, what from the trailer that you saw got you excited about this movie? Well, there is a brief clip in, in this trailer with uh, Rocket Raccoon on the back of Groot. Yeah. And yep. he's swinging around, guns blazing. So I'm very <laughs> interested to see what that is all about. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, it, it, it kind of looks like a prison, right? Yeah, it looks like they're in a prison. I mean, you know, at the beginning of the trailer, they get in the whole... Arrested. Arre- <laughs> yeah, the whole <laughs> police enforcement. Police lineup. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the only thing is we didn't get to hear Bradley Cooper speak at all because he's the voice of Rocket Raccoon so you didn't get to hear him talk but yeah that's something I definitely want I want to hear what kind of voice he's going to use like is he going to use an American accent he's going to use going to be an Australian raccoon (laughs) is he going to be a British raccoon I don't know right like uh, I don't know I always kind of imagined Rocket with an accent but uh, yeah we haven't gotten to hear it but definitely like everyone on the internet this week is talking about how they think that Groot and Rock, Rocket Raccoon can be like the new Han Solo Chewie and Chewie too. They're like the new C-3PO and R2-D2 it's like this is like this is the cosmic movie you know what I mean this is Marvel really branching out of their normal zone all right Dan how about you though I mean yeah it definitely I definitely agree it's another superhero well, well hero team up um similar to the line of Avengers but you know uh, since it's exploring more of the universe instead of just mm-hmm. Earth, you know, we'll see a lot of cool, cool tech, some really cool toys, yeah, um, some really interesting. I'm hoping a very diverse, like, like um, not main antagonists, but a whole bunch of like different villains we're gonna fight. You know, just like yeah. Um, uh, we know that the collector's in it. Uh, Benicio del Toro is playing the collector, and we know mm-hmm. that um, Lee Pace from The Hobbit. Uh, he, he, I can't remember if he played in The Hobbit, but um, he's playing uh, Ronan the Accuser. Okay. So uh, he's in it too. Um, and uh, yeah, the so we're getting to see an expansion on the universe. You were saying mm-hmm. the cosmic element. Yeah. It's just it, it's an exciting time. Uh, the thing I got really excited about was like you were saying uh, we got to see a whole lot of different things like Chris Pratt completely shirtless. <laughs> and, always, always a plus. And Zoe Saldala, completely shirtless. Looks like we're gonna see a lot of skin in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky Raccoon. It also, it also looks like this movie is gonna tie in with a lot of uh, Marvel loves to do the uh, if you stay for the end credits. You oh get, yeah. You get a clip, and you've got uh, Gamora, who is the daughter of Thanos, yeah. who we saw at the end of the Avengers. That's definitely going to tie in some way, right? Because yeah, <laughs> and we, we uh, I forget which one it was, if it was Thor, the, like Thor 2, but uh, the collector's at the end of one of them. Yeah, that's yeah. Thor 2, yeah. So, so do you think, um, because of Thanos, <coughs> sorry, burping, uh, <laughs> do you think because of Thanos, uh, we know that Ultron is the villain of the second Avengers movie, so the natural progression of things would make sense because they showed Thanos at the end of the first one to be in the third Avengers movie. Do you think Guardians of the Galaxy will be in the third Avengers movie? Do you think maybe they'll make an appearance in the next one? Maybe They're going to tie in some way. We're going to see mm. these characters come up in the Avengers or someone show up. Who knows, maybe Tony Stark in a space suit like they did recently in the comics. Kind of cool idea. Ooh. Yeah, I'm a genius. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but what do you think? Do you think it's going to tie into the Avengers? Eventually, at some point, we're going to see Guardians of the Galaxy and Avengers meet up, or an, an Avenger individually come and meet these guys. Oh, yeah, I can yes. definitely see that. Um, I think because Guardians of the Galaxy is Phase 2, along with Avengers 2 as well, mm-hmm. and the, the last of the Avengers is Phase 3. And Cap. Most, yeah, and Cap. Most likely, we'll, 
Well, we're going to see a Guardians of the Galaxy sequel before we see Avengers 3. That's just, just my yeah. prediction for right now. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah ho- hopefully, because this is what everyone's saying is, this is Marvel's big risk. And it is a risk in a way, because these are, to the general population, a lot of unknown characters. Like, um, not a lot of people know who Drax is, or who Star-Lord is, or who Rocket Raccoon is. But you see, anyone sees the raccoon, a talking raccoon, people are like, shit, I want to see that. <laughs> Especially a gun toad. Oh, yeah, like, you know, like... <laughs> Uh, that that is what I'm most excited for though Rocket and Groot just like mm-hmm. everyone else I just want to see Groot. them and then we get John C. Riley as a Nova Corp though too yeah. so there we go we get another cosmic edition the Nova Corps maybe we could see you know that kind of mm-hmm. thing in the future alright mm-hmm. so that's Guardians of the Galaxy that was a big news this week it was buzzing everywhere in the Twitter sphere and all over the place and <laughs> it's just good it's good it's all good. All right. The other big news this week, um, Fox finally casted their Fantastic Four because uh, this movie is supposed to come out in 2015, and it's been talked about for a while, and I don't know what they've been waiting for, but they finally casted the four main roles, and uh, they casted Miles Teller as Mr. Fantastic, Kate Mara from House of Cards as the beautiful Invisible Woman. Um, Johnny Storm was casted as, no, not Johnny Storm, Michael B. Jordan was cast as Johnny Storm, you <laughs> yes. George, and, uh, Jamie Bell as the thing. So what did you guys think of that when you heard that? Well, love me some, uh, some Kate Ma. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard I, not to love Kate Ma. Um, <clears throat> I, I noticed, you know, when this first came out, a lot of people were very... Uh, up in arms about uh, the Michael B. Jordan as the choice for the human yeah. torch. I feel like he added the four actors they chose. He's the best actor. Yeah. In show. So, <laughs> and I don't know why he'd be the one that people would get most upset about. Yeah. I like. Um, I understand that some people feel that like um, a, a comic book characters like race matters. I, like I don't know why it it should. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, Johnny Storm's race doesn't really apply to his character traits, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to be interesting to see how they make Kate Mara and him brother and sister, maybe yes. half brother and sister, maybe adopted. Like adopted type of thing. That's fine, you can do that, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I don't understand why they're so up in arms about him. It's like with the Gal Gadot casting, like, people are saying, she's not big enough. Uh, they actually released a photo of her this week working out, trying to put on some muscle, like we were talking about. And anyone can pack on the pounds yeah. or take off the pounds, so... But the other thing they were saying is, like, she doesn't have big enough boobs or ass. Like, I've never read a Wonder Woman story in which her her boobs or ass really came into her character traits. <laughs> Where, like, that was the defining moment for Wonder Woman, when her huge boobs did something for her. <laughs> You don't need huge, huge boobs to play Wonder Woman. You need, you need to stay true to the character. You know what I mean. And so I don't understand. Race shouldn't matter. Just like, just be true to the character. That's all I care about. You yeah. don't have to look exactly like a comic book character because remember these are drawings. <laughs> it's hard to look exactly like a drawing. So. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, out of that cast, the one I'm most worried about is Miles Teller. Mm-hmm. Uh, as Mr. Fantastic, because I've only seen him in a few movies, and he's kind of... Uh, I saw him in The Spectacular Now with Shailene Woodley. Shailene Woodley, awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and he was just kind of like a fast-talking kind of asshole. And I don't see Reed Richards as a fast-talking <laughs> asshole, you know what I mean? He's a modest, he's a scientist, he's polite. Yeah. Uh, so if I was going to like not just critique one person in the cast, the one I'm most nervous about is Miles Teller. Mm-hmm. Dan, what about you? What do you what did you take from the casting? Uh, I agree. Like um, Kate Mara, I'm familiar with from House of Cards and her and her taking Shooter as well with Mark Wahlberg. Yep. Um, <clears throat> the other three I'm not as familiar with, but um, <clears throat> from my most recent browsings about about the the casting choices, Miles Teller has been a name that I've seen come up a lot as well. You know, for the exact same reasons as you just mentioned. Yeah. You know, he's just he's not. Just his, his his roles haven't been known to to be in line with what we expect from Mister Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, looking through some of, some of his Miles Teller's filmography, like 
21 and over Project X. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, Big, big <laughs> post hangover like attempts attempts to be yeah. yeah. So I'm 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 not I'm just not so sure about that. Can a douche Soon. play Mr. Fantastic? Yeah. <laughs> seems, it seems like a similar argument for uh, <clears throat> Jesse Eisenberg playing uh, going back to Jesse Eisenberg, yeah. Lex Luthor, and how his roles besides you know Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, haven't really been in line with what you expect of a Lex Luthor and. Uh, the way he talks yeah. also isn't very uh, intimidating. Luthor esque. Luthor, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the fast talking. We were talking about that with Jesse. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's a good point. All right. Another it, sorry to yep. interject, but another okay. issue of concern with Miles Teller is that if we do see a relationship between Sue Storm and Reed Richards, Kamara's like late early thirties by now. I think right? she's early. She's like early thirty. 30s, yeah, and uh, Miles Teller's still pretty. He's he's still quite a young. He looks he looks really young. He's I looked it up. He's twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty seven. But this is a young cast, huh? Yeah. I like like I know they're I think they're going (laughs) ultimate verse is what they were saying. Mm -hmm. So young thing. Um, Speaking of things, the thing Jamie Bell, that's a guy I literally have never seen a movie with him in. So I looked him up, and uh, I've decided he can play the thing. Because uh, I looked him up, and the first thing that came up was his new movie, Nymphomaniac. Have you guys heard about this movie? That's the one with uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Okay, yeah. Yeah, with all, with all those actors, and it's about like a girl's sexual journey and something. Mm-hmm. But if you saw the posters for that film, uh, you'd see that everyone is doing an orgasm face. An O face, if you will. And uh, I saw Jamie Bell's. And after seeing Jamie Bell's orgasm face, I now believe he can play the thing. Okay. <laughs> he was. Uh, He's qualified to play Ben Grimm on <laughs> orgasm face alone. <laughs> I. He's uh. Because he's, he's Tintin. He's the voice of Tintin. He's the voice of Tintin. <laughs> Tintin and O Face equal Ben Grimm. The thing. <laughs> now this time of the thing, they're definitely gonna go mocap, right? Don't you think so? The mm. way they do the Hulk. Yeah. Because last time we had the Michael Chiklis and it kind of looked like like orange shit on top of him. <laughs> yeah. Like Michael Chiklis did a good job, I think. If you had to like pick the bright spot out of those original two fit. Well, I mean even Chris Evans wasn't that bad. But like those th- like but those movies were po- piss they poor. The, the movies were just piss poor. Tobias Fuke looked better in that thing suit than Michael Chiklis. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Tobias <laughs> oh man, forget to buy his Fuke. Uh, everywhere I saw like th- this fantastic forecasting this week, everyone was posting pictures of Tobias being like he was past it better than, than this cast. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so Fantastic Four due out next year, 2015. Oh, one last thing on that. Um, they haven't casted the villain yet. So what do you guys think? Doc Doom? Doc Doom. It's gotta be Doc Doom, right? You would think so. Gotta see new incarnation of Doc Doom besides the dude from Nip Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, what, who do you want? I said Cumberbatch on the site, uh, but I've got another name in mind because they went, they casted really young, so I'm thinking of a younger guy. Anybody got a name in mind? Fastbender. <laughs> so, so you're saying in that because Fox hired Mark Miller to bring their universe together? So they're talking about bringing the X-Men universe with the Fantastic Four at some point, right? Mm-hmm. So you're saying Fastbender could play Doc Doom and Magneto. I, I didn't really was... look into the politics of it, but <laughs> I'm just thinking, wow, when I think Doc Doom, I think Fastbender. Fastbender is the man. Yeah, just someone with that much gravitas yeah. as, <laughs> as the arch nemesis of a superhero team. Like, I, hope, I think Fastbender could fill it. I choice. hope they have Latvia yeah, this time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the I actual hope, nation? Yeah, the actual nation of Latvia. And not just, like, have him be, like... I, I can't remember what he was. Like, he was, like, the owner of a company, and they were... It, it was just dog shit. <laughs> but, uh, someone I had, um, in my mind was Jack Houston. Uh, he was on Boardwalk Empire. He played the guy who had, like, half a face. Did okay. you ever see that? Yeah. Uh, he was great on that show. I can't remember. For some reason... His name escapes me at the moment, who, what his name was on Boardwalk Empire. But he also just had a small role in uh, American Hustle, uh, where he played, like, he just had a small role off the end, with, and uh, he had some interaction with Jennifer Lawrence and uh, and Christian Bale at the end there. 
Yeah, he's just uh, an actor I really feel that, like, is just waiting for that breakout role. And uh, I think, you know, Doc Doom, a lead, you know, lead villain. A villain role in, in today's Hollywood, man, it gets you noticed. Like, we always talk about how villains are usually more important than the heroes in some cases. Yeah, so you need a villain that can beat your protagonist and just, you know, really fuck shit up. We, got, we live in a world where Heath Ledger and... and uh, and other people, <laughs> Tom Hiddleston and, and uh, Tom Hardy, have all like portrayed fantastic villains. So, mm. yeah, I think Jack Houston may be the next in line. <laughs> what do you think, Ray? Uh, well, I'm always, you know, a fan of Benedict Cumberbatch playing villains because he's on he's on a roll right now. Uh, one of the, one of the things I noticed about just buzzing around right now were a lot of people. We're suggesting a female Doctor Doom, Ooh. which is interesting to see because everyone's up in arms about, oh, Michael B. Jordan is being <laughs> torch, and they turn around like, oh, what a female Doctor Doom would be. If they really want to get A-OK. more people up in arms, <laughs> what could do that more than a female Doctor? <laughs> I mean, I know the director was, you know, not really on board with that idea, kind of yeah. swatted it away. And Josh Trank also denied that Michael B. Jordan was going to be Human Torch a few months ago when they first reported it. So, who knows? Maybe we'll see sure. Catherine Heigl yeah. cast as the female dog, dude. <laughs> what do you think, Dan? Dudley Truth, uh, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, she has a great repertoire. I'm uh, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Catherine Heigl is only in movies that make money and are fantastic. <laughs> 27 Dresses, was that also her? Oh yeah, 27 oh, Dresses. Jeez, what a resume. <laughs> if, I actually, if I actually had to pick the only movie I ever liked her in, it was Knocked Up. Yes. Knocked, Knocked Up's so, fantastic. Yeah. You know what, let's get Seth Rogen as, a, as, as Doc Doom. Seth Rogen? You imagine Doc Doom with a mask with the Seth Rogen laugh? <laughs> <laughs> That's Seth Rogen. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, but uh, a female Doc Doom. Who knows what could happen with that? All right. Fantastic Four. Uh, That's due out next year. Uh, But speaking of female villain castings, uh, this week on Gotham, they finally cast the lead gangster in the show, Fish Mooney. Mm hmm. A real great name for a gangster. <laughs> Fish Mooney, see? Uh. <laughs> and when you hear the name Fish Mooney, you don't necessarily think of a woman, but we were cast as a woman. Uh, Will Smith's wife, Jada Pickett-Smith, was cast as Fish Mooney. Now, uh, the only thing we really know about Fish Mooney <laughs> <laughs> is that she is going to be the mob boss who controls the penguin in the beginning. And we all know that penguins eat fish, so my guess is by the end of this first season, this fish is going to be cooked. What do you guys think? I like that. I uh, <laughs> didn't make that connection, but I like that. Um, yeah, I think you know we won't we won't see a more prominent the penguin until yeah. like later on, whether it's the second season or you know further down the line but uh i'm interested to see this character you know we haven't seen her before if i had to like like make a comparison to another show i feel like the penguin is going to be like the frank underwood of this show he's going to be making moves and placing himself in the right positions in fish mooney eyes and right when the moment strikes he's going to take his umbrella and put it right in the back of jade pickett smith's (laughs) head take that bitch out that's an interesting comparison. The only problem I have is that Jada Pickens Smith is a no Garrett Walker. Like she's she was Captain Niobe in the Matrix series. So she like was. She knows how to lead an organization, or at least a magnetic traveling ship thing of the GD. <laughs> but um, uh, no, I, that that would be interesting, especially just how amazing Kevin Spacey has been for House of Cards. To see um, who, who who's been cast as Robin Morgan? Lord Taylor. To see Robin Lloyd Taylor pull off a similar performance. Penguin, yeah, I oh man, I would totally be on board. Yeah, uh, uh, I just think that he's good. It's um, the reason I think that she's only gonna be on one season is because <laughs> the other day she wrote on Facebook uh, that she's been contractually obligated for one season. Usually, if you're gonna be around for a while, 
you get a little longer contract, which of course can be voided, say cancellation or anything like that. So I'm thinking that season one, she's the head. She's the big bad. She's the big bad, but then you got Penguin taking over shit. And um, with her as the female gang boss, um, what do you see her as? Like a Sophia Giganta from The Long Halloween, like that kind of thing? Or like, is she, like what kind of mob boss do you think she's going to be? Mm. Think she's gonna be real hard ass. I can see that. See how hard ass. Yeah, like uh, when, when you think. Of, um, damn, we were talking about this the other day, and you you were talking about dread. Right. With right. With, with the mob boss. With with um with Lena Headley as playing Mama. Um, yeah, Mama. She's a stone cold bitch. Type. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and I I really enjoyed Lena Headley's um performance in dread. Because it wasn't the archetypical, you know, you have a female main boss surrounded by her sub-commanding female counterparts. Like, she, like, Lena Headley held her own around just a room full of murderous, you know, you know, I'm not trying to be misogynist, but they are all male, male killers. Yeah. Like, in Dread. And, um, I could see Jada Pinkett Smith in a similar role where, um, you know, we won't we won't be thrown um, an archetypical, you know, a set of female gangsters around here. We'll have just whoever will make the four best gangsters there. I don't know you're trying to <laughs> you, you know what I was thinking of, like, I've never seen, like, thought of Oswald Cobblepot as, like, a gangbanger, <laughs> or, like, a gang enforcer. Like, just, like, think of this for a second, like, you know, they're going into, like, guns a blazing to collect from somebody. And you get, like, fucking Oswald Cobblepot in the front. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I know he's going to be a low-level gangster. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've just never seen him as that character. So it's going to be interesting to see that iteration of the Penguin working for Fish Mooney. Which, I, I keep saying the name over and over, and it's still, it's the weirdest name. Fish Mooney. Fish Mooney. Well, like, um... In all the, like, Batman mythos, we've never had a Fish Mooney, and we've had so many other crime families, like the Maronis and the Falcones and the Roman Silas and his Black Mask crib, crib club. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Fish Mooney. I mean, the majority in, in the majority of those gangsters do operate on the Gotham waterfront, though, so Fish Mooney, like... Fish Mooney on the but, waterfront? Uh, we can well, definitely expect a lot of different to see meanings to this fish name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this fish. <laughs> this name, you can just make up the entire show just from this name. Just one word. Like well, we're, so we're focusing much. on the fish. What does the Mooney mean? <laughs> Money? <laughs> Mooney? <laughs> Mooney? <laughs> Mooney? <laughs> Count de Mooney? She's going to try and uh, fish approach it with a European accent. <laughs> <laughs> fish Mooney. Fish Mooney. <laughs> As well, so you need to get me some money. The moon, eh? Thank you, the moon. Fish? As well. You know, speaking of Oswald, Ozzy, this is the best middle name ever. Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Oswald Chesterfield. Chesterfield. <laughs> I, I know we got Robin Lloyd Taylor as a young penguin, but wouldn't it just be shitloads of last to see Danny DeVito back in the penguin? <laughs> like he doesn't have to have the fucked up like like sludge coming down his mouth <laughs> and shit from Batman Returns, but just like I was talking about that gangbanger situation. Just imagine Danny DeVito busting into a house as the penguin. <laughs> 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 <It'd be hysterical. laughs> get, get some prequel insight to how he became the. the the <laughs> the the circus <laughs> well, I mean, he was Pee Wee Herman's kid, wasn't he? So wouldn't everyone be <laughs> fucked up if they were Pee Wee Herman's kid? <laughs> Just imagine the seed that man is spreading. Oh, man. You only see Pee Wee Herman for like ten seconds in that movie at the beginning when he throws him in the yeah. in the water. But he he Pee Wee Herman played his dad. That's true. It's all right. It's true. Do you think we uh <clears throat> in this? Because I, I mean, they, they've already said we're gonna get some some other big Batman villain names throughout this series. But yeah. do you think in this first season with uh, Fish Booney and her notorious <laughs> band of gangsters... Her like, notorious uh, school of gangsters. <laughs> do, do you think we'll get any other uh, sort of even just like name drops? For... Um, I hope if they are going to do name drops that they 
don't go the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. route and be like, <laughs> just like only mention things. I hope they go the world building route. And they build the whole world of Gotham. Gotham in the DC universe is so vast. It has so many characters just in Gotham. Mm-hmm. In comparison to other cities, like Metropolis has a lot of people, but Gotham is probably the most like filled city with characters. So I want them to be like, uh, I don't remember Tommy Elliott's dad's name, but like, it's like drop a name like Thomas Wayne and we never see him, or drop a name yeah. like Elliott and never see him, you know what I mean? <laughs> Be like, Edward Nigma helped us design this. <laughs> Tony Stark helped us build that computer over there. <laughs> cool story, Clark Craig. <laughs> Weren't you killed in the Avengers? Doesn't you coming back make the whole mission completely redundant? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> alright, but, um, alright, moving on. Jada Pickett cast as Fish Mooney. Got them. They're going to shoot that soon. Awesome looking cast. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for it. It's going to be fun. All right. Another news this week. Um, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 coming out in May. Um, they just released a <laughs> new image of Dane DeHane as the Green Goblin. And it's a nice up-close pic on Dane's face. And uh, him as the Harry Osborn Green Goblin. And it, it's him and it looked like, I don't know if they're in this inside of a clock tower or some shit. <laughs> but like they're on the mechanism that's spinning and he's got a big fat smile as he's choking Spider-Man. So uh, yeah, thoughts on that. That beautiful green smile. Like <laughs> when I was, uh, when I looked at it, I, I just once again thought like, I'm never going to get to see the Green Goblin with uh, the mask, you know what I mean? With the the purple coming on, the purple, I don't know what you call it, a stocking hat. <laughs> <laughs> and like his purple, I, pumpkin bombs. Where are the fucking pumpkin bombs? <laughs> That's what I want to see. I'm sick of the, the in the in the uh, Romney trilogy, we had those weird, just like normal bombs. Yeah. Oh, normal bombs? I want pumpkin I want bombs. Pumpkin shit. Pumpkin bombs <laughs> are what make the world go round. Oh, maybe Pinch and Fish Mooney uses pumpkin bombs. Maybe we'll get our fill there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, um, when I saw this picture, they're going the ultimate goblin route where he, like, kind of becomes a goblin. Yeah, he, he, def- he definitely looks more... Just his actual face that's more goblin-esque. <laughs> He's got, like, green scales on the yeah. side of his face. And, like, I said I said to you guys, it kind of looks like the leprechaun from Leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> Where's me gold, Peter Parker? <laughs> that was like a pirate voice. Where's me gold, Where's Peter me? Parker? <laughs> Top of the morning to you, Peter. Where's me gold? <laughs> <laughs> me father is sick, Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what did you guys think of this face? What did you, how do you think it looked? Um, I mean, with with just this picture to go off of, it looks a little silly right now. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's because the smile. It's yeah, the, it's because he's like look, look smiling up. at like at the camera choking <laughs> Spider Man. Look up the picture because it kind of looks like a weird picture. Like if if there was a villain Facebook page, it looks like that would be his profile picture because it looks like he's purposely smiling at the camera, and it's just a little ridiculous. <laughs> Like, hey! <laughs> and, like, you know, there's, like, the catch underneath it. The time me and Spider-Man fought here and I almost killed him. <laughs> the time I was choking him out. The, the time I almost had him. <laughs> I was about to get me money back. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it definitely, you know, it looks a little silly now. But, I mean, it's it's just the first look, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they, uh... They're definitely steering away from the, the Power Ranger mask he was wearing. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't no William Defoe Green Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> Willem Defoe, rather. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't... The more pictures I see of this Green Goblin, the more... Uh, uh, bad feelings I get about it. Just yeah. like... Just because we haven't really seen any good pictures of him, like in that, in that giant wide panel poster of yeah. uh, Spidey and his three main villains, like he still looked really 
goofy in that one. <laughs> and he, now he looks even more like a stooge. So just, <laughs> you know, how, how much further can you get to lower expectations for this Green Goblin? Hopefully his performance will just blow us away. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, um, when I was thinking about Dane DeHane's voice, um, did you guys ever watch the Spider-Man cartoon in the 90s? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When Harry Osborn took over for Norman, he I feel like he, he and Dane DeHane kind of have a similar voice. Like, um, that he can play that Harry o- Goblin. Uh, Harry Goblin. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Goblin. Uh, uh, he can play that Harry Osborn Green Goblin, like, persona, you know what I mean? But that Harry Osborn's dad was the Green Goblin originally, so... Are we going to get a Norman Goblin? Norman Osborn. A Norman Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Harry Goblin. Just change your last name to Goblin. The Goblin. <laughs> Oscorp. Gobcorp. Gob. <laughs> something suspicious <laughs> about Oscorp these days. I think there's something suspicious about Norman Goblin. <laughs> there's something suspicious about Sebastian Blood. <laughs> I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's his name. <laughs> Don't <for> blood. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's got the same name as the na- name of the bad guy, Brother Blood. Victor Freeze. What, what's going on? Victor Freeze. <laughs> Victor Fries? No, Freeze. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but um, you know, like you were saying, lowering expectations. Um, I think Jamie Foxx's Electra looks awesome. Yes. And, I mean, I'm starting to warm up to the Paul Giamatti rhino suit because the more I think about a CGI guy in a rhino suit, the more stupid it sounds. <laughs> Even just saying it sounded kind of stupid. <laughs> like, just imagine Paul Giamatti's face in a rhino suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, like... That's, that's what I was like originally kind of picturing when, yeah. when people announced Paul Giamatti is the rhino. And I was like, oh, that's, that's just going to be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be super ridiculous. <laughs> Webhead. <laughs> Paul Giamatti's head with a horn. I'm just gonna be doing that. Head with a horn. Just, <laughs> just no, no. <laughs> Paul Giamatti. All right. The old style blue suit. All right. So that is all we're gonna talk about. Dane DeHane and his fucked up face. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. More news. More Michael B. Jordan news. Mm-hmm. Guys in the news all week. <laughs> all right. So. Um, Someone was reporting on Twitter earlier this week that they think Cyborg is going to make an appearance, a cameo appearance, in Batman vs. <coughs> Superman. So they're saying that Zack Snyder's been interviewing and looking at uh, 20-year-old a- African-American um, athletic actors, and uh, that just sounds right in the ballpark of Vic Stone, high school superstar, <laughs> Captain Marvel's hero. Yes. Uh, <laughs> who enthralls the DC Universe with his football talents. Um it sounds like they're uh, that they're looking to cast him in a small role. It's a rumor, but uh, the other part of the rumor is that uh, Michael B. Jordan had talked to Zack Snyder about the role. Now, what I said was, I don't think if they're if this is true, I don't think they're going to cast him because he can't be more than one comic book character at a time. I'm okay with like Chris Evans being Human Torch and then becoming. And then being. Yeah. I'm okay with Ben Daredevil then becoming. But Ryan Reynolds tried Deadpool and Green Lantern at the same time, and then we got the two worst movies that both studios have ever produced. <laughs> so I didn't want the Ryan Reynolds syndrome on our hands of Michael B. Jordan. But, um, yeah, so what do you guys think? Uh, Dan, especially oh, you, yeah. since your super bold prediction <laughs> was Cyborg in this movie, do you think you were right? Are you... Show ponies, unicorns, <laughs> where is the be? <laughs> Give me my money. Like, come on. It's happening. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for some big stuff. You stone. bold motherfucker. <laughs> you bold mofo. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see him hold his own against Ben and Henry Cavill in future installments of, of Superman yeah. of Man of Steel. Do you have an actor in mind for the role of Vic? For, for the role of Vic, if Michael B. Jordan doesn't work out? Yeah. Um, Michael B. Jordan, by the way, would be fantastic. Um, if you ever watched Friday Night Lights, he played the quarterback on Friday Night Lights in right. seasons four and five. He literally is perfect for the role, but he's too busy being Giant Storm, so I don't think he's going to do it. But who do you got? Oh, man. I... Oof. I'm not... Anybody in mind for you, Ray? No? Mm. Not, not at the moment. I, I want to ask 
Daniel, because because you said uh, that he can he can hold his own. Do you do you think that means that he's gonna kind of come into a cyborg role in the movie? Like as soon as we get that name drop, like here's Rick Stone now he's cyborg, or do you think it's gonna be like here's cyborg? Here's here's yeah, or like <laughs> here's Vic Stone, just kind of as Vic Stone. High school. Well, they did film those scenes of the football game, right? Yeah. So could Vic Stone be like Metropolis U or Ooh, yeah. or uh, Gotham State University? And then in later installments we of the series, we see him turn into Cyborg. I I definitely see him appearing in the Justice League film that's coming up in a couple of okay. years. Okay, so we'll, hang on. What do you think in this film? What oh, do you think oh, his sorry, cameo? In this, film. in this film, do you think he's? What is his cameo going to be? Is it going to be in a football like game? A, is it just going to be like like he looks up and Superman's like? punching Jesse Eisenberg in the balls in front of him. Like <laughs> and he's think... like, I should become sad. <laughs> <laughs> that punched Jesse Eisenberg in the balls has inspired me. <laughs> Is he getting quoted by Lois Lane on the story? <laughs> well, I was just looking up and Alex Luther got punched in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> um, my life it's not for the same <laughs> um, I can probably see Vic Stone's introduction in this new movie more of one more not focuses on him but on his father potentially being a Wayne Tech employee Wayne Tech you don't think Star Labs yeah. you think Wayne Tech I think Wayne Tech I think he'll start off as Wayne Tech employee <laughs> and then his son will just get casually introduced in like a scene or two mm-hmm. alright let's expand on that because I actually like that idea so we got, I think, what is this, that Silas Stone? Silas Stone. All right, so, so we got Silas Stone, <coughs> Wayne Tech employee. He's the lead. This isn't true, by the way. This is just me <laughs> coming up with some bullshit. Some, some pure speculation. speculation. <laughs> this is pure speculation. <laughs> Silas Stone, all right? We got him. All right. He is developing new technology. I'm basically just stealing the idea of World's Finest, by the way. Been developing a new technology for Wayne Tech that is helped being funded by LexCorp. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, <laughs> um, uh, Bruce Wayne finds out that LexCorp is planning on using this for a militaristic type thing and wants to pull out, but Lex continues to fund Silas Stone's work un- without uh, Bruce knowing. And uh, this, you know, this alien technology to be, of course, fight Superman. And maybe that alien technology is what eventually saves Vic when maybe when Lex Luthor gets punched in the balls, one of the test, <laughs> one of his testicles comes out and hits Vic in the fucking eye, and that's when half his body <laughs> falls off. <laughs> half his body falls off. It's a good origin story. <laughs> <laughs> You know the butterfly effect when they say a butterfly flaps its wings and a tsunami or a tornado happens somewhere else in the world? <laughs> when someone gets hit in the balls, a superhero a is superhero. born. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so that is what's going to happen in Batman and Superman. Look for it. Look for that shit. <laughs> That's where we're expanding our prediction. <laughs> 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 the prediction just got that much bold. <laughs> if Superman did punch in the balls, though, it just like they would oh, fly uh, everywhere. And <laughs> imagine the velocity that that testicle would fly out. Oh, oh man! I'm telling you, it would take out half of Vic Stone's body and make him have to become cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> right there on the football field. We the just like Justice. We have the greatest heroes in the world. We've got a, a Martian. <laughs> Uh, a warrior for Themyscira, an Atlantean, and a guy who was brought back to life after being destroyed by a <laughs> testicle. Half his body is a rogue, <laughs> <laughs> a rogue testicle. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Okay, no more talk about Lex Luthor's testicles. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, we were mentioning the Justice League, so it sounds like if this room is true, just Cyborg's in the Justice League then. Yes. That they're going to go maybe with the new 52 iteration, try to add some diversity to the Justice League roster. Um, kind of like how in Captain America 2 they added Falcon, you know, African-American mm. hero, trying to get that in, and maybe eventually Black Panther, because they're shooting in South Africa right now. We'll save that for another time, though, when we get more information on that. But um, it sounds like they are going for a more diverse roster. Like, so uh, 
boys, what are your thoughts? What do you think the roster for the JLA movie, not JLA, Justice League movie is going to be? Um, if I had to speculate, like I just did, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to get uh, Superman, Batman, mm-hmm. Cyborg, um, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. I'm only go. I only think six. Oh no, and Flash seven. So Flash. Seven. Seven. Yes. seven. Super yeah. seven. Super super, super seven. seven. I I pray to God Captain Marvel doesn't show up. Oh, I, I, I mean, I like Shazam. He's a fun character, but like, like he's being shoved down our throats, I believe, right now by DC <laughs> Entertainment. And uh, it's when uh, Jeff Johns. I usually praise him. I'm gonna criticize him for a moment here. When he gets a little boner for a certain character, he shoves it down our throat. You know what I mean? Like, like Aquaman, I was enjoying being throat fucked by him, but, <laughs> but like, uh, I'm kind of getting sick of the, the Shazam, <laughs> the Shazam dicking in my mouth. So, like, what do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think if you've got Superman on the team and you've got Wonder Woman on the team. There's really no need to have Shazam on the team. <laughs> All right, but yeah, okay. So you got Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Who else is on your squad? Um, Who's your starting lineup? <laughs> Cyborg, The Flash, mm-hmm. a John Stewart Green Lantern. Indeed. I don't want Hal Jordan. No Ryan Reynolds. No, <laughs> especially not if it's going to be played by Ryan Reynolds. How do you feel about be? Ryan Reynolds playing Lex Luthor's testicle? I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. It's a very good testicle. <laughs> it's a beautiful testicle. That testicle is married to Black Widow and Carol Ferris. He's, he's got the best Lake testicle Black. that money can buy. <laughs> Black Luther's so. testicles have seen some beautiful women, I imagine. <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg's not so much, but Lex Luthor's. <laughs> All right, yes. And uh, I'd like to see Aquaman. Aquaman. I would very much like to see Aquaman. Uh, Whether or not they'll do it, I'm still not sure of, but uh, I'd love I'm to see Arthur, for it. Ca- Ar- Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Curry in a live action setting. He's a character that gets shit on constantly. <laughs> and I want to see him kick some ass and people be like, shit, Aquaman ain't no bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Aquaman ain't nobody to be fucked with. Daniel, your mm. roster, sir. My roster. Um. I'm going to have him leave out Aquaman. I just don't think that he'll be bankable enough. I'd love to see him, but I'm not sure if we're going to get him in our upcoming jail installment. Unfortunately. Okay, so who do you have replacing him, asshole? (laughs) No, I agree. I would love to see Aquaman in my start. But you don't think that DC has the balls to do it? I don't think DC's going to man up for this. Yeah. (laughs) Um, What what about potential for future installments? Yes. Maybe like a... I could see it. Like I'd love Atlantis it, type of if, hint. If you can do a Thor movie that makes money, you should be able to do an Aquaman or a Wonder Woman <laughs> movie. We, we were talking earlier about Guardians of the Galaxy, a group of characters that outside comic book fans, no one has even anyone heard of, but it's a buzz in the world because Marvel's done such a great job with their other characters. Mm. They can do these obscure characters, and DC's afraid to do a Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> we got. They got to nut up or shut up, man. They got to get out there and <laughs> nuts just keep coming up. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> nuts are on the table for discussion nuts today. and balls all over this. <laughs> but they really got to step up to the plate and just take take a swing. I know they did it with Green Lantern, but talk about like just like they just like expected it to like to work because they just threw a shitload of money and CGI at it. <laughs> and they gave us a giant shit monster and Peter Sarsgaard screaming for two hours and thought we'd like it. <laughs> 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 the yellow got in me! <laughs> Jesus Christ. They, they, they just, they, the only risk they took was Green Lantern. And I, I know that Marvel has a studio specifically designed just to make Marvel movies. Right. But uh, Warner Brothers is the studio that makes all the DC films. They're missing. They're looking for the things to replace Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. they had the Harry Potter yeah. franchise. <clears throat> DC comic book movies should be the thing to replace it. Yes. You should be able to make money off these movies and make quality films. Marvel has shown it time and time again. How many movies they got out now? Like eight, nine. 
Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, and every one of them has made money. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm just beside myself that, that they don't have the balls to do it. I hope they, they find them. Yes, yeah. I agree. And bringing up Green Lantern, I think that, I agree. I think this current installment will be the right time to try their hand again at another Green Lantern. And another, I'm sorry to say it, but another, uh, we're, we're going to see another iteration of how before John Stewart. That's my. You think another how? That's my how prediction. I want yeah. to see John Stewart. John Stewart <laughs> is certainly in my starting, in my starting lineup for a JL movie. Now, um, all right, because we're talking about this, this is something we never talked about. Um, do you think that the Arrowverse? That includes Flash and all that stuff. <laughs> it's going to be because con- you know Agents of Shield is connected to the Avengers. Is that going to be connected to the movie verse? Could we see Steve Amell and Katie Cassidy grace the silver <laughs> screen as uh, you know, uh, as uh, I'm sorry. I, there's so many things going through my head. I want to say them all uh, at once, but it wouldn't make any sense. Uh, could we see them grace the silver screen as their characters? Could we see? Uh, Grant Gustin stand next to Ben Affleck and those guys, right. or do you think that we're going to see a how um, um, a Wally West Flash to differentiate between those universes and maybe like someone else's Green Arrow? Well, that, that's awesome that you brought that up because I actually think that with how Avengers brought in two unpowered characters in Hawkeye and Black Widow, we're probably going to see that in jail. I think that Steve Amell will be in Justice League. You think Steve Amell? Yes, I think that. So it, you I want Green Arrow and Batman? Green, on Green the Arrow team. is in my lineup. Yes. I would love to see Green Arrow on the Justice. Yeah. Team. I would absolutely love that. I love. Uh, I'm a huge Green Arrow. We we all right. Arrow comes up every freaking episode <laughs> of this show. So if you didn't guess, we kind of like Green Arrow. Yeah. We also picked Green Arrow as one of the top two comics you should be reading. So yeah. I, we're, we're very biased towards the character. And I loved, I'd love to see him too. Like, mm-hmm. And I think Steve Mel's really grown in his role. The other thing from the Arrowverse I would love to see on the silver screen because he's the best actor on the show, hands down, is Manu Bennett as Deathstroke. Oh and just God. because yes. he, he, like, he is the best part of the show, in my opinion. Every time he shows up, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, uh, and, like, seeing him as a villain, like, maybe, like, in a Justice League movie, it's somebody, a Legion of Doom, he's hired by someone, anything, you know what I mean? Mm. Just, uh, that'd be great. So, I don't know. I, I have a feeling, though, you were saying you think Stephen Mel's going to be, I, th- I don't think they're going to be connected. I feel like we don't have uh, the means to connect these things. Yeah. What do you think, Ray? Well... I mean, at, at the point Arrow, the show, is right now. And I mean, of course, there's, there's time until this movie comes out. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really see the Green Arrow from the TV show being connected, if there is a Green Arrow, to any sort of Green Arrow interpretation in the Justice League. Because, I don't know. We, we just haven't really gotten, you know, that vibe from this show yet. Uh, <laughs> the the only other person we've seen is you know Flash, yeah. And I mean, it's two years for them to to work up to that, I guess. Right. I yeah. Mean, so well, I feel like it's it's almost hard to say right now because the show is still kind of in its infancy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <In its infancy. laughs> and there's there's still time to develop you know yeah. plots like that and stuff. So right. um, th- like the uh, the model of having things going on TV and movies at the same time kind of seems like it's like the future of where media is going. You know what I mean? By like having these movies like Batman and Superman that we have to wait till 2016, fill your time in by catching up on the universe by watching Arrow and Flash and this kind of stuff could be the future. You know what I mean? That's what Marvel's trying to do with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. between their movies and they're having these tie-ins. It's too bad that show is just average. I wish it was better. I really do. I, I'm... I criticize Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a lot on here, and I want to like it. I really do. I want. I, I cheer for all comic book TV shows. I am psyched for Daredevil and The Defenders and Iron Fist and Luke Cage, all those shows. Excited. That's awesome for Netflix. I'm going to be watching them. We're going to be talking about them on here. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is just trash. It's a waste <laughs> of time. Um <laughs> With the centipedes and Clark Gregg calling everyone who doesn't watch anymore a loser. And 
It's just it's all it's gotten pathetic. Yeah. And I think Joss Whedon has such a limited effect on this show. Like he he's not spending his time on this show. <laughs> his name's on there, but he's not doing anything. You know what I mean? It's like in the comic book arcs with um, this Batman Eternal comic with Scott Snyder. He plotted the book, but I, I was reading how he plotted it, but everyone else wrote it. So it's like his name's on there, but he's not really writing it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like they're selling you a false product. <laughs> a lesser product. A lesser product. <laughs> and I, I wish Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. was good, but... All right, back to what I was saying, though, uh, that I think that the future of comic book movies and TV shows is that they are connected in that um, between the films, you can wait by just watching the the TV shows. Mm-hmm. That's why I hope they're connected. I just th- don't think they're going to... I don't think the organization is there at DC's headquarters to pull it off. Yeah. But the thing going in its favor is that Arrow does have a similar type of feel to the Man of Steel universe yes, and yes. the Nolan universe, mm-hmm. even though the Nolan universe isn't connected in canon anymore. It just has that kind of vibe that it, if it could, it could adapt cinematically. You know, so the possibility is there. Mm. Right. That, that goes into like the next facet of my argument, which is, well, not really my argument, but reverting back to an earlier discussion that we've had on how the Man of Steel really tries to ask the question... What happens when we suddenly bring a superhero into today's world? Mm-hmm. You know, an arrow asked the exact same question. So, of you know, what happens when we suddenly have mask vigilantes pop up in this random, in this random city, <laughs> and um, Starling City, Star- Star- Starling City. So Central I mean, City, Vancouver. <laughs> from Vancouver, with a lot of Boston shots, and <laughs> a lot of exterior Boston <laughs> shots. Yeah. So to see the origin of Green Arrow. And have zero mention of Superman and Batman, you know, makes me think that maybe these events could be happening concurrently and they could be leading to the same thing. Yeah, that could be. Mm. Could you imagine, like, the finale this season in May, like, uh, like, the end of the episode, you just see, like, Felicity and Diggle watching TV and they just show, like, today a, a fight in Metropolis caused these buildings to collapse. Uh-huh. And we just see, like, how it was this odd, like, uh, Clark yeah. fight. <laughs> the amount of excitement that would draw. Like, just be like, oh, my God! Uh-huh. <laughs> like, they exist in the same world. That would be awesome. Like, like, you ever see Ben walk in? <laughs> Felicity, 25 years, his junior opera feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if Ben Affleck ever walked down to Arrow... I think I could just die happy. Yeah. <laughs> that would be something else. Uh, ben Affleck directed this episode of Arrow as well. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they definitely uh, they definitely have time before we're going to start getting more details about the Justice League. So if they want to steer the show tie, yeah. in that direction, where you get these little tidbit times, yeah. they could. Yeah. Make a fucking cyborg show. Cameo <laughs> on there. Cameo them in. Cyborg us up until then. I don't know. I'd watch it. <laughs> I mean, they had Lee Thompson Young play cyborg on Smallville. Did you ever see Smallville's Justice League? Their ragtag Justice League? <laughs> where it was Superman, Green Arrow, Bart Allen Flash. Oh, Aqu- man. Really? Bart yeah. Allen Flash? <laughs> yeah, Aquaman and Cyborg. <laughs> and some Supergirl, right? I was and Supergirl came in eventually, yeah. They did have the Justice Society episode where they had Dr. Fate and Hawkman and people come in and Stargirl. <laughs> well, it was just like so obscure. <laughs> like like that, that team, that's just such a strange... Team. They would never bring that team to the screen. Right. But just like... Yeah. Stargirl. I'd love to see... Uh, yeah, so... Well, DC's trying to take over TV, it seems. They got the Constantine, John Constantine show coming out. They got Gotham coming out. They've got uh, Flash and Arrow. Just like they're on every fucking channel. Yeah, I'm just glad that it's not strictly, strictly CW that these shows are coming yeah. out. Of. Like we're going to see some Fox quality shows. Almost Human has been fantastic. So, so um, I've got really high hopes for Gotham right now. Yeah. Um, Fox quality. I've never heard those two words used in a sentence before. Uh, <laughs> I'm just true. kidding. There is some full quality Fox shows. You know, The Simpsons was quality for a long time. The Simpsons, the Simpsons was quality. Yeah. Family Guy was quality for a while. 
It's there. The potential is we, there. We gotta animate this Gotham show. <laughs> animate <laughs> Gotham. We gotta have a Fish Moody's voice. It's just one song. <laughs> Fish Moody. Then Danny DeVito, when you have to play live action, Penguin, you could just voice yeah, him. Yeah, you could just voice him. <laughs> Fresh Moni, say everyone wins. <laughs> Jada Pickett Smith as Fish Moody. She could use the same voice that she uses for the hippo in Madagascar as Fish Moody. Oh, Boom. That's true. This shit writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> Innovation domination got them. Got them. <laughs> Right after Bugs, bu- Bugs Bob's Burgers, Bob's Burgers, it's got them. Oh the Bob oh Burgers God, got the block is our most <laughs> successful time block on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, but got them, all that shit. I hope Ben McKenzie be fucking uh, Gordon and Justice League. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And if that's so, do all those shows on different networks tie in? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> I think that's way too big of a stretch. I think the only things that potentially could tie in are the Arrow and Flash show because they're the CW. That's the Warner Brothers show. You know what I mean? That's the Warner Brothers uh, network. So that's the yeah. only things. All right. So So bring it home. Yeah. Yep. So wrapping much. it up. But uh, picks, yeah, uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Hal Jordan, Aquaman, and Green Arrow. Flash, I'm not sure where to stand on Flash. It's because I don't no think Flash. Arrow's Flash is going to be there. So okay. I, maybe we will see a wall in last All right. All right. Cool stuff. Cool yeah. beans, man. All right. We're going to wrap up the show right now. Boys, thanks for being on. Um, but there's one last thing I just want to announce. Uh, on Monday, guys, we're going to be putting out on our blog the announcement of the K- first annual Capies. The Capies. The Capies are the Comic Book Movie Awards. So it's going to be all the comic book movies of 2013. I'm going to be putting the nominations on the site. And next week, the day before the Oscars, we're going to put a podcast on about who won the Capies. Best actor, best villain, that kind of stuff. So look out for that. Uh, Ryan, Dan, once again, thanks for being on. And uh, I'm Christian. Thanks for listening. Always a pleasure. Thank you.